everybody. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Thank you for coming today. And uh, welcome. We are going to talk about exploring A chords today. And this is a good topic for beginners. It's a good topic for intermediate and even advanced players. So here we go. Let's just dive right into it. Let's talk about the A chord. A lot of times I play the A chord with one finger, just like that. Let me put it on the screen for you. There's the A chord I'm talking about. Now an A chord has three notes in it. It's got an A and a C sharp and an E. That's how you build the A chord. And on the keyboard, it's a white note and a black note and an, then another white note. And uh, but we're playing five strings, right? Why are we playing five strings? Well, because we've got two A's, two E's, and a C sharp. Okay. Now, you don't have to play all of those notes. You can just play uh, three of them. Let's say the A, the E, and the C sharp, just those three, and you have a complete A chord. Anytime you have those three notes, you have a complete A chord. Now this is called the root position because the A is in the bottom. Hello, Bob. Now, there we go. Now I've got the A, E, A, and the C sharp there. And then there's the E on top. Now the next chord that we're going to look at is the A7. That's when we take that middle note and we go down to the G open string. How do we get the 7, someone asks. Well, let's see. Here's your A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's your G. Right there. I'm going to use the lower one right there. So it has four notes in it. A, E, G, C sharp, and then another E. Still in root position. Root position means we've got the E uh, it means that we've got the E, excuse me, the A in the bass. Let me turn off my phone just in case someone is trying to get in touch with me. Don't want it ringing right in the middle. Okay, now let's go to the next chord, a sus two. The two is um, you got an A, and then you have a B right there. That's the second note in an A scale. So that open B is a two. Hello Dean, how you doing? It's one of my favorite chords. And Jethro Tull started, uh, a song started out like this from uh, Living in the Past called Witch's Promise. Now let's look at another one. There's an A sus4. That's uh, when the four is when you go one, two, three, four, fourth note in the A scale. What we do is we take that C sharp and we go up one fret or one half step or a semitone like they say in the UK and different parts of the world. And we eliminate that C sharp, which is what we call the third. One, two, three, and we go to the fourth. And we have that kind of a sound right there. Yeah, there's um, something, uh, sus4 chords are great. You hear those all the time in songs. And here's an A7 sus4. Now the A7 sus4 gets its, uh, remember we had the, uh, the 7, which was the open G, and then the sus4, which was the D note. Well, when you have those two together, your A, your E, your G, your D, and then your E there again, you got two E's. Got an A7 sus4. 
beautiful chord. You can go from A7 sus4 down to A7. That sus4 um, gives us, it clashes with the E note, right? So when we have this, those two notes together, Well, what happens when a, a note clashes like that? It increases tension in the music when we're playing. And what we want to do is we want to decrease the tension. Have you ever been around people that are arguing and you just want to get out of there, <laughs> right? Let's, hey, can, guys, can you stop arguing about this? Well, this little argument that right there between those two notes. So when it relaxes like that. Anytime you have a sus4 chord, there's always an argument between the 4 and the 5. And then when it relaxes down this, right? <clears throat> like that. Let's go to the next chord. Oh, there's my A chord again. So those are the four chords. Let's see, was that four? One, two, three, four. Yeah, those are the four chords that we talked about. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I was going to talk about. You have any questions? Put them in the in the comments below. So what happens here is that when we're playing chords, we think sometimes when we're just beginning to play that these are the only chords there are. Okay, that's the that's the A chord. That must be it, right? That's the only one. No, no. Anytime you have an A, C sharp, and an E, like that's bar chord right here, those are the same notes as this. See that? They sound a little different because these are all fretted notes, and this chord has an open A string instead of a fretted A string, and then an open E string. And those open strings, they hang on a long time. Of course, on a bar chord, you have a lot of control. Like that, but I can't do the same thing. It's harder to, to stop that E, that open E and that open A string because I, I don't have my fingers on it, unless I stop it with my left hand somehow or my right hand, like that. A lot of control with a bar chord. <laughs> That's right. That's how they resolve their argument, Bob, is that they, one of them actually moves to a different note, and then the argument is resolved. Uh, it's called a resolution, right? It resolves. Okay. So um, you can play just three notes. You can pick out three, right? Or three notes and play in that way. Uh, a lot of times when we're playing classical guitar, you'll notice that they're, of course, classical guitarists, they love finger picking, right? For instance, this piece right here. Oops, I'm messing up. I'm not playing the low E or the high E string, I'm just playing the inside notes. And then I'm going to switch and then go to a different chord. And then this one. Then here. I'm going to come up here. Now when we're playing classical guitar, what happens is that we skip over a lot of notes because we're just picking out certain notes. But a lot of folk guitarists, uh, rock guitar players, uh, play a lot of strings. Of course, um, I was in a band once called Small Change. This was back in uh, the mid-80s. And my friend Tom had... Uh, written a song and he showed me how to play it and so I was playing the guitar part da, 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 da. you know I was had a lot of distortion in it and he said to me he stopped me and he said you're playing it wrong and I said what do you mean I'm playing it wrong and he says no you're playing it wrong I said I'm playing exactly what you told me to play here's the chord right there he goes yeah but you're playing that note right there you're not supposed to play that note I was like what are you talking about 
And he showed me, and he was very particular, even though this was a song that had a lot of distortion in it, he was very particular about which notes I played in that song. And that really opened my eyes at that moment to being more careful. Uh, you know, I was in my 20s at the time, and uh, it was, uh, I didn't realize that sometimes people took a lot of care in what they play, right? So when you're playing an A chord, now let's just talk about one more thing before I go here. If you have any more questions, put them in the, hello, hello, hello. There's somebody there on the screen and I cannot read, I can't, I don't know if that's Chinese uh, or what, <laughs> Taiwanese or Indonesian, but uh, welcome. So you can play just some of these notes. You don't have to play all of them. So I can play the four inside strings. Or I could just play three strings. Or I could play two strings. Right? Now, every time we have... Uh, I'm reading the comment there. He says, thanks for all your videos. Really helpful for me. Well, I'm so glad. I'm, hel I'm glad they are helpful for you. I know there's a lot of people that love my videos, and I thank you all for being here. Uh, by the way, if you want to support me, um, there's links in the description to see how you can support me more and make, help me to make more videos like this. Okay, so what am I? Oh, I got my, my mind off the thought there. But you can play just some of these strings. You don't have to play all of the strings all the time. I had an interesting comment the other day in one of my videos, and, and the person said, I didn't realize that you didn't play all the strings all the time. Well, on the A chord, let's go back to that A chord. Right there. You notice that there's an X. I guess I had that on this on the screen the whole time. There's an X right there on the low E string. And uh, yeah, what about A minor? I'll get to that in a minute. So um, there's an X on that low a E string because that if you play that E string, that's a different chord. That's not an A chord anymore. That's an A chord with an E bass. Well, I thought E was in the chord. Well, it is in the chord. And what does it have to do with anything? Well, the E bass turns it into what we call a uh, an inversion, right? Sometimes they call it a slash chord because you'll see A slash E. And this is what it sounds like on the keyboard. So here's an A chord with an A bass. Now here's an A chord with an E bass. Now it's got two E's, and that E in the bass, it really unbalances the chord. It wants the, the chord uh, now wants to move. It, it wants to do something. It wants to go somewhere. The stability of the chord has changed because it's an inversion. Whenever you put a different bass note in uh, with a chord, it changes the feel of it. It changes the stability of the chord. That's what happens. Okay, so um, Robert says... <laughs> What about A minor? Yeah, let's look at A minor here. I'll take this off the screen, and we will put on A minor. There's A minor. Okay, you'll find this in my book, uh, which is the Quest, Quail Studios Music and Guitar, uh, uh, Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets book. I have in the back some theory and and what we call first position chords, and all those chords that I just scrolled through really quickly are first position chords. So, uh, these, these are really important chords, and we'll talk about those later more in depth. But this A minor chord, so what happens is that that C sharp that we had for the A chord, let's go back to A. See, there it is right there. When that C, goes down to C sharp. Like that. And all of a sudden, we have an, uh, an A minor. Now, on the keyboard, remember I said earlier, you have a black key, excuse me, a white key, a black key, and a white key, and the C sharp is that black key. You go down a half step, and you change it into a minor chord. That's how it changes from a major to a minor. Just that one note, the third, 
right? Now, uh, Bob asks, you flat the A and you have an A major 7. Well, that's true. If you have two A's, like that, and then you flat one of the A's, right, like that one. If you flat, if you flat the bottom A and you don't only have one A, then it's really not an A major 7. It sort of is, but there's no A in it anymore, but you got to have two A's. And then you flat the top, right? That's That works really well with, um, let's see, the, there's an A right there. You take it back like that, or you could do it this way. Put the G sharp on top from here, or you could put it in the middle of the chord like that. And you have an A major 7, and that major seven name comes from what we call the interval and that's in my book too. You can get my book, look in the description, you'll see how to get my book. Any kind of support that you give, financial support, I will send you my book. So yeah, these are really great chords and a lot of times when we're playing, like when we're doing this kind of thing, you know, playing a little jazz with just finger picking. A lot of times we'll just pick out exactly, uh, you know, the kind of notes we want. And you can also do that with a pick, with hybrid picking, like that, using your pick and your fingers, like that. Uh, Bob says something by the Beatles. Something in the way she moves, right? That's right, that's in C major 7. C going to C major 7. In fact, the voice has that. Something in the way she moves. moves. What if you just play the C chord? Something in the way she moves. And you don't put the that B note in the chord, you just sing it. You still have a, a C major 7. All right, we're kind of getting off the A idea here, but yes, you change notes, you change chords, you pick the only ones you want. Let's do, okay, one more really quick thing. If you play all five of your strings, let's go back to A. That's an A chord. If you play four strings starting here and leave those two low notes out of it, you have E, A, C sharp, E. Now you have an A. A with an E bass. Now if you go down to the next one and, and play that A right there, you have A, C sharp, E. You still have an A chord right there, those last three strings. The first string, second string, third string. Right? Because it's a complete chord, because it has three notes in it. Those three right there. Okay? There you go. So, um, yeah, you can play uh, chords with two notes, three notes, double the A, double the root, double the fifth, double the third, that kind of thing. It's really interesting. All right. Thank you for being here. That's all I'm going to say today about A chords. We're going to explore some more chords next week. Right now I'm going to go and have a, a hangout with my supporters, and we're going to talk about ear training. And that's what I've chosen for today because one of my students this week, we, I was working with him on ear training, and I think he's going to be there. In fact, I see him in the chat. So maybe he'll be there. And uh, thank you for being here. If you would like to join us uh, for a hangout, which I always do right after a live stream, then look in the description. And if you become a supporter, then I will send you notifications about my hangout and the links. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here. Bye.